Facebook video ads, SpaceX cleans up the mess, and we all go for a ride on a sea turtle. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 372 for Thursday, July 2nd, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash techknight. Welcome, I am Megan Maroney. Let's get to today's big news. Recode reports that Facebook has a plan to start monetizing videos and to share that ad revenue with some of its popular video creators. The terms will be the same that YouTube has been giving video creators for years, 55% of ad revenue to the video creators, 45% to the platform. Joining us today to talk about this story as well as a few others is Ian Thompson of The Register. Welcome, Ian. Hi, Megan. Always a pleasure. Yeah, it's been a while. I know you've been on Twitter a few times, but uh, we haven't talked in a bit. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, the Sunday afternoon sessions are great fun. But uh, yes, it's nice, nice to do a daily one again. Well, you, I heard that you guys did a great job with Leo being gone uh, on Sunday. Uh, I, uh, Le Georgia Dow from iMore actually filled in for Leo on our iOS show today, and she said she had loads of fun with you guys. Oh, yes, yes. It's. Uh, I hope he's having a good honeymoon, certainly. It's... Uh, it's it's an awful time to be over in Europe, though. Very, very hot. Yeah. So it's <laughs> uh, I got a tweet also saying I did a great job on Twit. And I said, well, um, I didn't host Twit. <laughs> but I, I mean, I guess I look a little bit not at all like Becky Worley. But uh, I took the compliment anyway. Well, yes, I mean, but, uh, Becky was great, and she's a fellow rugby player, so we had an awful lot to talk about. So <laughs> it's, uh, it all worked out well. So let's talk about Facebook. Uh, it sounds like Facebook won't be running ads like YouTube. Instead, they'll be standalone, like autoplay ads with sound in a suggested video stream. Um, I'm not against ad-supported media, obviously, but do you have any idea if we'll be able to just scroll through them or, or not? Um, well, at the moment, they're only running it on, IO, on the iOS app for the iPhone. Uh, and then in very limited circumstances, uh, I think they will they will do, sort of do do the uh, sort of associated videos by the side of things. Uh, and bear in mind that you know they're going to be getting a, a considerable amount of revenue out of this also in mapping the consumer behaviour of who watches what videos. So it's not just going to be about ad revenue; it's going to be about the personal data that they can collect and how they can monetize that later. All right. Before the show, we were talking about the news feed, and you were saying you know your frustration with. Facebook is that you just can't see, you can't decide what you see. They have this secret algorithm. Uh, they're showing us things that they think that we want to see uh, in, in a way that we're, we're never really sure what they're doing. Uh, so do you think that, uh, are you a little bit afraid that they're taking all of this information and uh, using it in some other way? Um, well, it's just, I, I don't think there's anything sinister about it. I mean, it's just that in order to build up a better a better profile of what kind of adverts and what kind of things will appeal to you, then this, you know, what kind of videos you watch would actually be a very useful way of doing that. Um, it was, I mean, people are getting more and more canny about what they're putting on Facebook because they're aware of what, you know, the, how the data is being used. So it's just another way to really get to know the Facebook audience and then monetize them in a way which suits them best. Now, you have a funny piece this week about a Facebook Q&A that Mark Zuckerberg did where he said, among other things, that one day we'll be able to send full, rich thoughts to each other using technology. I assume he meant just, you know, through our brains. <laughs> Do you have any idea what he was talking about? Oh, I, I, this this was serious pie in the sky stuff. I mean, uh, and also very dangerous. I mean, when you think what people are actually thinking inside their heads most of the time, if that went down on Facebook, there'd be wars, there'd be you know, riots, there'd be mass divorces. Um, although, obviously, I love my wife dearly. But, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's one of those sort of think piece things where it would be nice if we had it. And obviously, they're going into with things like Oculus. They're going into new ways to actually interact with Facebook and with computer environments. Telepathy, it's even if it's possible, we're talking 10, 20 years. And I suspect in 10 years, we'll still be talking 10, 20 years. I mean, you do have a limited level of neural control over some things, but it's very patchy. You've got to train up a lot of equipment, and it's very expensive. Um, actual telepathy, where you can just think of Facebook posting, it's not only so far in the future that I'll probably never even see it. And it's also, as I say, rather dangerous, because some things are best left unsaid. 
Well, I mean, Zuckerberg is really interesting. Um, in his Q&A, he also discussed the real name policy, uh, which uh, is controversial. Um, you have to use your real name on Facebook. He, he says, he clarifies the real names policy saying real name doesn't necessarily mean your legal name. It could be the real name you go by or what your friends call you. Uh, but, mm -hmm. and he says it keeps, the real names policy keeps people safe. Uh, what do you think about this? I think it can make it can keep people very unsafe, to be honest. I mean, quite a few people use a different name simply because they don't want to be tracked by an abusive ex-spouse, or they don't want to be accused of being, or they don't want to be outed as a homosexual, uh, or they're just really, you know, not looking to be to share all that information with with Facebook. I mean, Zuckerberg has said that he considers multiple identities to be dishonest and, you know, people should be honest and open, but it's a little bit hypocritical considering the way that he's bought all the properties surrounding his house in San Francisco and shifted everyone out for his own privacy. Yeah, I mean, he, he is... Uh it's it's interesting because, I mean, he's getting more mature, he's getting older, but, I mean, he really is in charge of so much of our lives. I mean, we we spend on average of 40 minutes on Facebook. Um, like I said before, they're just sort of spreading out into messaging and video and now music we hear too. So um, I know you, you talk and write a lot about privacy and feel very strongly about it. So uh, I, I wonder, it does seem like he's backed away a little bit from his, you know, everyone should use their real name all the time, uh, but it still seems to be something that he believes in. I think I think it is. Uh, I think he has matured slightly on it. And and to be honest, Facebook only really has power if you use it. Uh, there's nobody actually twisting our arms to use it, although it would be a, some, a tremendous social disconnect at this point if we didn't for a lot of people. I mean, I, for example, have a lot of friends in the United Kingdom who I can't get to see on a regular basis. If it was just email, we'd probably be chatting a lot less. So Facebook has its uses. Um, I just think Zuckerberg is maturing and also recognizing the business realities of this. Because now that Facebook is a big company, it's publicly quoted, it's not like it's private, it's personal fiefdom anymore. He, can, he does have control, but at the same time, when people protest, it does have a serious effect on the business. So let's move on to this, uh, the stories you've written about space this week. Over the weekend, a SpaceX rocket carrying supplies for the International Space Center exploded before it could reach its destination. Now, you say that SpaceX is going to sort out this snafu of the crash much faster than NASA. Uh, how, how are they going to do that? Well, SpaceX has a key advantage in this, in that they design, build and operate their own robots. NASA has to deal with a whole bunch of contractors. There's a certain amount of, because it's a government organisation, there's a certain, certain procedures which have to be gone through, which can be very time consuming. And also politicians like to stick their axe in. I mean, I don't mean this as a criticism of, of NASA in any way at all, because without NASA, we wouldn't have a commercial space industry and they have a tremendously important role. But it's just going to be quicker for SpaceX to do this because they've got all the data in one place. They've got all their people largely in one place and they can sit down, go through it eat and, and chat, talk them directly to the people involved and find out exactly what went wrong. I mean, the word I'm getting from SpaceX at the moment is that it looks as though there was a rupture in the oxygen tank of the second stage, but they're having to go through the data and compare that with the sensor data and compare that with what, what was actually seen on the ground. As we've seen with, for example, when the Hubble telescope was was first put into position, um, mal a malfunctioning sensor nearly led that, that launch to be scrapped. So, you know, it's there are such a myriad of things that can go wrong in something as complex as a rocket motor. Rocket motor. But I do think SpaceX having that complete cradle to grave thing uh, for their hardware does have a significant time advantage. So among the supplies on the SpaceX rocket was two pairs of Microsoft's HoloLens aug augmented reality goggles, which we've talked about. I know you got to play with a few times, but there mm -hmm. were also other supplies like food. Are the astronauts at the International Space, Se Space Station going to be okay without these? Um, well, yes, thankfully, uh, this was taken into account with the planning for the ISS in the first place. They generally have about six months supplies of food as a reserve, not even, you know, sort of for day-to-day -day stuff. And NASA's confident that they've got enough uh, food and critically uh, water uh, to last for at least until October. Now, there's another Russian, there's a Russian rocket going up on Friday morning, uh, which is carrying about three tonnes of food and supplies. And uh, fingers crossed, uh, the last three attempts haven't gone particularly well, but fingers crossed that one should actually go, go off smoothly. They're using a reliable, if older, rocket and a new cargo, uh, progress cargo pod to do it. Well, Ian, thank you so much for joining us. Is there anything else you're working on that you can talk about? 
Um, well, actually, coming back to Facebook, they're trying, a, uh, they've just displayed a new laser communication system, which they're going to put on drones, solar powered drones, the size of 737 aircraft and fly them over remote areas to beam internet access down. If that works, that could be really fun. So I thought that I had read that they were uh, scaling back on the beaming internet access to space. Was that it? Apparently not, no. Um, Zuck, Zuck went on his Facebook page yesterday to show pictures of this uh, laser display system. And they've already talked about these drones and saying they've got sort of decent testing done uh, back in the UK. So uh, I think they're going ahead with it. They may be scaling back their ambitions slightly, but um, I think certainly we will we'll see at least a prototype test stage. It's possible they might abandon the whole thing, but he does seem very committed to this. So is that piece already up on the register? Or is uh, it is indeed, yes. We've uh, we've just popped it up there for you. Excellent. Well, uh, you can go to the register and see Ian's work, the, the stories we talked about in this one, and more every day. <laughs> so thank you so much, Ian. Okay, enjoy the weekend celebrating kicking us Brits out of your country. <laughs> yes, we will. And stay <laughs> safe in San Francisco. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we'll be fine. <laughs> right. Take care. And you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Coming up, why one analyst thinks the Apple Watch sales are slowing and are you ready for Windows 10? But first, this episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Braintree, code for easy online payments. If you're a mobile app developer, check out Braintree. It's a payment solution used by companies like Uber, Airbnb, Hotel Tonight, Living Social, and Munchery. Braintree has made the payment experience in these apps seamless and magical, and now you can add a similar experience to your own app. There's excellent customer service, very simple integration. Braintree gets you ready to receive payments very quickly. And Braintree's continuous support plus fast payouts means you'll be prepared as your company grows from your first dollar to your billionth. Braintree is helping solve the problem of mobile cart abandonment by offering a best-in-class mobile checkout experience. Braintree gives you a full-stack payment solution, support for all payment types your customers might want. You can start accepting PayPal or Apple Pay, Bitcoin, Venmo, cards, and more, all with a single integration across all platforms with superior fraud protection, customer service, and fast payouts. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash technight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Writing in the Windows blog, Microsoft's VP of Operating Systems, Terry Meyerson, outlined the Windows 10 rollout plan that's scheduled to start July 29th. Windows insiders will be the first to get Windows 10, and then Microsoft will start notifying reserved systems in waves. Each day of the rollout, Meyerson says, we will listen, learn, and update the experience for all Windows 10 users. If your system is eligible, you should have already seen a new icon in your notification tray and a pop-up that says, your PC is ready for your free upgrade. We're always talking about how the internet is making us less interested in books, but maybe some people out there are reading too much Neiman Lab reports that Scribd, the Netflix for eBooks, is finding that their paid all-you-can-eat subscription model allowing readers unlimited eBooks, audiobooks, and comics isn't working out so well because people read too much. Who knew? Well, anyone who's known someone addicted to rom romance novels knew this. Scribd and, and its competitor Oyster pay publishers when one of their books is read, and romance readers are reading too much to make the service profitable. For now, the company is taking down some of its catalog of popular romance novels. Analysts from Pacific Crest Securities say demand for the Apple Watch is slowing down. Apple has not posted numbers of their own, nor are they likely to. In a note to the brokerage firm's clients, Andy Hargraves pointed to lackluster reviews of the device, fashionistas calling it a calculator watch, and general consumer interest that falls below the iPod. If you want to learn more about what this means, go to twit.tv slash TNT and watch the interview on this topic that Mike Elgin did this morning with Market Watch tech reporter Jennifer Booten. Mother Jones Magazine reports that the combined African-American workforces of Google, Facebook, and Twitter could fit on a single jumbo jet. According to recently released Equal Employment Opportunity reports, Twitter has 49 black employees, Facebook has only 81, and Google has 628. 13% of the overall workforce is African-American, which, Mother Jones points out, means that they are unrepresented at Google, Facebook, and Twitter by a factor of seven.
Business Insider reports that Reddit's Ask Me Anything feature is down, and many Redditors are up in arms about the departure of Reddit's Director of Communications, Victoria Taylor. She was reportedly let go. Large subreddits like movies, science, and gaming have gone dark, apparently in solidarity for the much-loved Taylor. We will be following this story, and we'll report more tomorrow. And finally, even though I would really like to, it is not okay and probably illegal to climb on the back of a sea turtle and go for a ride, but not if you are a GoPro camera. The World Wildlife Fund released underwater footage today of what it might look like to ride a sea turtle along the Great Barrier Reef. Conservationists very carefully fit a small GoPro camera to a tagged green turtle to better understand how they responded post-release. The World Wildlife Fund project is an effort to find out more about the level of pollution affecting turtles within the Great Barrier Reef. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the world's large is the world's largest reef system spanning 1400 miles and currently under threat from dredging, fishing and pollution from the shipping, mining and coal industries. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.